With all doubts, I think it's by far the best league in the world. How dare you score like that in the Premier League? Interesting scenario over here. Gally, I want to start with you on this one. Obviously, they lose, I mean, possibly their best two players in Rafinha and Calvin Phillips. A lot of new additions coming in. Do they offset, you think, what they lost? Have they done enough business to cover what was lost? Well, I I think when you lose your two best players, you can't really say, right, you, we, we talked about we're Liverpool supporters, right? When we lost Luis Suarez, we went out and bought eight players. They look good on paper. And then you realize quickly, not one of them was going to fill the boots of the best player in the Premier League that you just lost. They didn't lose the best player in the Premier League by any means, but they lost arguably the most important player the club's had in 20 years in Calvin Phillips, a kid to come through the youth ranks, make it to the top and start starting for the, you, you know, for the England national team. And the base of their spine right and then they also lost technically the most talented player they had in Rafinha and maybe their only game changer as good as Bamford was the year before for me it was really about how good Rafinha was on the wing creating opportunities and Bamford doing what good strikers should do which is you know be in the six yard box banging goals and drink wine out of a box under a bridge but what I really like about the moves they've made here is I actually like the fact that they gave jesse marsh whether or not you believe jesse marsh is a good manager coach or the right pick for them they gave him players that he wanted and he was familiar with he's had success with tyler adams with aronson and with christensen in the past especially with christensen um during his time at salzburg i love the sinistera uh pickup I think he's actually a fantastic buy and going to be a huge talent. Unfortunate for him, he got hurt yesterday in one of their preseason friendlies, and it looks like he might actually miss the start of the season. So that could be a real blow for them. So, you know, they did a lot of business. Have they made enough defensive signings? No, not for me. But, you know, they conceded, I believe it was like two less chances and half a less goal after Marsh took over last year. So there were some defensive improvements. Not that that's much to say when you're coming off a Bielsa team that basically didn't defend. Um, so I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. The one thing I will say, the players say all the right things at Leeds, and that's the existing players and the new players. So something Jesse Marsh is doing is galvanizing that team and seems to be working with them. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that I think they're improving. I don't know if it's good enough yet to put them in a position to not be in a fight come April and May. Um, but I think they're better equipped going into this campaign from a depth standpoint than they were last campaign. And that's the thing. So now it really hinges a lot on uh, March, I think, because he has brought players that are like he is familiar with. So, you, I mean, you look at the sheet and you're like, you know who picked these players, so there's no doubt that it was players that the manager wanted. Sometimes this works, Pickler, where the manager brings in players to a new team that he's familiar with, maybe players who understand what he wants to do. But sometimes it backfires, especially because now this is a different league and it's a much tougher league, so it might not translate as much. If you were a gambling man, and we know you are, I'm going to keep saying this, which way do you go? Which way do I go in terms of what? Like, where do they land on the table? I mean, in terms of, like, does the, do these moves translate in terms of how he wants to play? Uh, do they bring that over with them? Or when the Premier League, it's a different ball game and it does not translate? I mean, I think it probably does. Like, we've established the fact that he at least has an identifiable, identifiable system he wants to play. And it improved them immediately. And he's bringing players from that system. And I don't think that ever hurts. That is the opposite of Jurgen Klopp does, right? He has an identifiable mm -hmm. system. He shuts the door and says, I'm never going to see these players again. So, I mean, there's two schools of thought on that where you want to develop your own, identify your own, and get new players for your system. And maybe Leeds doesn't have 
the setup from a scouting standpoint or from a personnel standpoint to pull that off and identify players. So the easiest and most digestible thing to do is to go to what you know. I'm really conflicted on leads because I don't like the parts. I don't like the pieces that are there for Jesse Marsh, but everything's trending up for them. If you look at the back of last year, I think obviously Rafinha Phillips is our big blows. I look at that transfer list and I, I like, I hate to say this. I look at that transfer list of players they brought in. I actually love that list. If you take the Americans out of it, if you take, if you take the Americans, <laughs> I, like, I, I know I'm being honest, like it's, but this is it's, getting 50 ridiculous. Million. it's 50 million. It's half of what they spent between Tyler Adams and Aaron. So you take those out of, I like those players that are left there. I think Roca is a stud out of Bayern. I think he's going to be a really, really nice player um, as defensive mid. But, but I think a lot of this is going to hinge on, like, I, I don't know. Like, so can they hang on the Jack Harrison? There's, there's like vultures circling over that. I'm not sure Jack wants to be there much longer. Like, so can, can they hang on to Harrison, who I think is a key piece for them? So there are some questions, and, and we've seen this with, like, teams that have big windows from the big guys with Chelsea all the way to the little guys. Like, can you get this many new pieces to gel? That helps that they're all coming from similar systems. That certainly helps. Um, I just don't know. I, I don't know what this is going to end up looking like through them. It, it's projecting the right way. But I do think like, you know, getting these fullbacks in is good because you now have the ability to get Luke Ayling into the center back position where he needs to be. He doesn't need to be out right on the right back side. So you're he's doing things that are smart, but the pieces, I don't know. They they're not we've seen this team have a lot of injury issues. So like that's going to be a big part of this. Can these guys stay healthy as the core all the way through? Um I don't know, man. For me, like I look at this team, if they're able to get this Belgian striker, that would be a major coup for them. This this young Belgian kid they're trying to get, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his name, but AC Milan's number one target they're in for him big i knew Leeds is big in for them if Leeds is able to pull that off that would be a major coup for them um in a in a good sign for them if they can pull somebody like that in um i still see them i still see them personally as like 15 to 18 in this i see them at 15 through 18 and i know i feel like i should be more bullish on them i'm not though for 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 whatever reason i'm i i'm I don't, know. I don't know. I'm probably lower than I should be on them, but I, I, I see that 15 to 18 for them. I think you, you look at this list, Gally. I mean, one thing I like about that list is the youth, right? I mean, there's a lot of like young players that, you know, uh, they're kind of like building for the future. You kind of knew Victor was going to be negative about the American players. And I'm amazed he didn't say Bamford 10 times. Uh, what do you make? You're like the, more the American national team contingents over here. Uh, what do you make of these signings? Well, I mean, you're all, the all it really player. means is That's I watch him and complain. I watch him and complain. Paul <laughs> yeah. just complains. Um, without I guess watching. that's fair. That's I'm fair. not doing the work. I'm not going to do the work with Galley's doing it for me. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You know you're going to get the rent no matter what. Um, so I was the kid on a group this. project that would just get in right at the end. Yeah, I, I do find that. it. <laughs> I do find it funny we had to have a whole discussion about all the hate that gets directed at us as Americans. And then we talk about Americans and we throw more hate on them than anyone overseas does. Um, as far hey, as the hey, Aaron, just blame Bickler. <laughs> I'll say this. I, I'm not a Tyler Adams fan, was not a Tyler Adams fan in the national team. Everyone talks about all the intangibles and what he does, how he could be the best American player. I would take Weston McKinney every day of the week and twice on Sunday if I needed a player to give me 10 minutes of hard work in a midfield from anyone from the United States. So I'm not a fan of Adam. So I don't know that that signing will be great, but I'm not sure he's going to be the actual starter. Cause I think they're going to play Roca in the Phillips role as a defensive midfielder. Uh, and I think Adams might be more cover and Adams probably doesn't want to hear this. He's probably going to play some right and left back, which he always bitches about. Um, I I completely disagree on Aronson. Um, Aronson was on Juventus's radar. Aronson was on Dortmund's radar. Aronson had bids for him from other bigger Premier League clubs, and they tried to buy him before they hired Jesse Marsh. Aronson's been a big player on the docket, I believe, for a lot of different clubs because he does something that 
we haven't seen from most Americans. He bet it right in and showed that he could play in two, three different positions in a lot of different fluent setups. And I think he's going to play behind Bamford and actually be a starter in that side. And Jesse March kind of alluded to that, you know, Rodrigo had a fight to be the second attacking player on this team. And I think that's because they paid a lot of money. Now it's going to be a lot of pressure on him, but I think this kid comes and might be the most complete attacking player to come out of MLS in a long time. Like there are a lot of people believe he was more ready to play in Europe than Almiron was just because of the way he plays. And he can do things that Leeds doesn't have. And that's that number 10 kind of floating player. I, I think Aronson, if he hits the ground running has a real good chance to to be a big important piece and i think the left wing has a chance to basically take the rafinha mantle and be their best player and i think that's important bamford cannot be their best player or they are going to be in that 15 to 18 you know battle and relegation all year long in my opinion because i don't think you can consistently expect bamford to give you 30 mat 30 starts and 15 to 20 goal involvements because he's only proven to do that once, you know, and to steal a line from the Johnny Danger Dangerously movie, you know, my grandmother hung me on a hook once. And it's a once is what you have to remember out of that, you know, and I just feel like that's Bamford. Like I scored, I was a Premier League striker once, but he had four other no. shots where he wasn't. Uh, yeah, how Bamford dare, how will always you. be the best player. I know. Bamford. How dare you? I know, right? I know. This is a for those of you who are not familiar with our regular podcast. Uh, he is Bickler is the president and one of the few members of the Bamford Club, I think. So, uh, where do you you so you were putting them at fifteen to eighteen, then, Gally? Yeah, I think it's going to be tough for them. I think they're going to have to fight all year, and I think we'll find a lot about the players. And I think, honestly, you'll find out a lot about Jesse Marsh as a manager because I think he came in last year. He got a lot of flack. It didn't go good. He got picked on for being Ted Lasso and all these different things. But I feel like he earned the respect of the players and the lead supporters, and I think they're actually behind him. And I think anyone who you know would admit in public that they're a lead supporter would actually say to you, you know, it isn't often that our supporters are a hundred percent behind the manager, especially if he's not one of our own. And that was what was such a surprise about Bielsa. And I think the fact that they moved to a guy that wasn't a guarantee showed that they had a real plan for this guy. And I think they do believe in him. And I hope it works out for him. Cause as we always say, the more people in this country that follow European football, the better football will be in this country. And there is a way for that to happen. And that's to have a successful manager, you know, and a couple of successful players performing at, at, at good clubs. So for me, it's a good sign for the sport growing over here positively and us not being um, thrown in our face every 15 minutes of how great these Americans are. Like we've had with Pulisic or even when Bob Bradley went to Swansea and everyone knew he would fail. I think Jesse Marsh did it the right way and, and, took the steps you're supposed to take to get a job. And now I hope he succeeds for doing that. I don't care that he does or not because he's American. I care he does or not. So it helps what we're trying to do over here, which is create more support for the international game here in the States. 